Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine. Alicia, thank you very much. Uh, you are uh, training to be the first human to go on Mars. After the successful landing of Insight last week, you wrote on Twitter, I feel you Mars and soon I will know your heart. With this safe landing, I'm here, I'm home. Hi, yeah, it's very nice to be here. It sounds like you can't wait to go there. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think Mars is, um, you know, definitely the next step in terms of, you know, space travel is the next place uh, for us to go and explore. So super excited to eventually get there one day. Are you dreaming in the night that you'll go there? Uh, it's definitely been a dream and a passion of mine uh, all of my life and I definitely can't imagine doing something else or uh, working towards a different kind of career. It's definitely something uh, that I've always been passionate about and um, definitely um, think it's going to be a really awesome experience. You are preparing since you, you were uh, six years old and how was the beginning? I mean, in the beginning, you know, I didn't know anything about space and um, no one in my family really knew anything about space and where I live isn't, um, you know, full of space uh, information. So uh, a lot of it was just going to the library, ask, uh, asking for like pictures of, Mar um, you know, maps of Mars and books and videos of rovers landing and uh, anything I could find about space and about Mars. Um, I eventually started going to space camp in Alabama uh, and there's also um, a space camp in Turkey as well as Canada uh, and so going to these different places and trying to learn as much as I possibly could. How long you still have to wait until the first uh, human mission to Mars? Do you know? Yeah, so right now the mission is set to be in the early 2030s and uh, it all just depends on how quick we can put together a rocket and uh, get everything tested and get everything safe for the first people to actually go there. So uh, right now it's set to be, you know, in the next 15 years or so. Um, so plenty of time to, for me to prepare and go to college and uh, get ready for the mission. At this moment, are you sure that you will be the first human on Mars? Uh, I definitely think that if I continue on the path that I am and continue building a resume, that's a strong possibility. Definitely it's not 100% certain that I will be selected for the mission because I would still be intra uh, entering the astronaut selection process, but a lot of what I've been doing now is to make make it so my resume is unique uh, because, you know, there's 18,000 people that apply and around 12 get selected, so it's very strict. So it's saying, you know, uh, I went to college or I went uh, and studied this at university, so how many other people did that? And so it's trying to have unique things on your resume that can help you stand out. To, so hopefully I'll have a higher chance of being selected. You decided to assume any risk. Why? Uh, I definitely think that there are loads of risk involved in um, going to Mars and going to space in general and um, none of them really scare me or frighten me in any way. I think that learning about all of it all my life, you know, I started learning about the dangers of space, uh, you know, by going to space camp and, you know, learning that stuff at seven and then continuing to learn more about it as I've grown up. So it doesn't necessarily scare me and also, you know, meeting with people who are working in the space industry, you see how passionate they are and you see that safety is super important. There's tens of thousands of people that work to send one astronaut to space and so all of them, um, you know, check each other's work and they're all um, making sure that the astronauts will be safe for the mission. There is any specific um, psychological training? Yeah, definitely. You know, it's very important to not only train physically, but train mentally. I mean, you're going to be in a small space with the same people for an extended period of time, uh, you know, away from your comfort, away from your home that you're used to. And so uh, it's definitely part of the training and it's getting used to, you know, being with those people, getting comfortable with those people. Um, so it's definitely a different experience than um, something that we would typically have here on Earth. Uh, but it's all part of, part of the process of getting there. I watched an interview with your father. He is also here with you. He said that uh, he is very proud uh, helping you to fulfill your dreams. But on the other hand, he is destroyed when he is thinking that the biggest day for you could be the last day when he can hug you. Do you discuss with him about this? 
Yeah, definitely. I mean, all my life, ever since I was little, you know, we've talked about uh, the mission to Mars, and my dad has been a huge support and has traveled with me and has helped me uh, find many of our opportunities. Has been there, you know, every step of the way. Um, and something with the mission to Mars, you know, best case scenario, it would be, you know, three a three year mission, for example. So when Dad would be like three years um, without like seeing each other. Uh, obviously, there'd be communication, but still, it's not that same. Uh, feeling so it's almost like preparing for that part as well and that's also another part of like the mental uh, aspects of it is leaving you know everything that you know and leaving all these comforts that you have here on earth. Um, now you are taking classes in many languages in many domains which domain is the most difficult and in the same time the most interesting? I mean, my school is a international school, so starting in kindergarten, I started learning all my all the subjects in four different languages, so English, French, Spanish, and Chinese. Um, so that has been really awesome to kind of grow up and learn the language and the culture of all these different languages. Uh, and all my teachers are from the countries that they're teaching. So I have teachers from Europe, from South America, from all over the world. So it's really awesome to kind of be in that environment. Um, so I've really enjoyed that part of uh, my education. Um, you know, and also in all the space courses that I've taken, um, you know, definitely the citizen science program that I'm in is very international. We have people from Egypt and Portugal and um, the Netherlands and all over the place. So. Any from Romania? Um, there could be, actually. I don't actually know everyone who's involved, um, and I don't even know how, uh, how many countries we have involved, but it's super international, it's super amazing to uh, learn uh, from all these different people's culture, and um, you know, we're all coming together with the same interests of wanting to learn more about space. Which is the most um, interesting technology that you've seen in your, in your career? Uh, I definitely think that one, uh, one super awesome technology that uh, we sadly can't use on the first mission to Mars, but um, right now it's going to take six months for us to get from Earth to Mars. However, we already have engines that can get us there in six weeks instead of six months. So that is a huge improvement, uh, and so that's with the new development of plasma engines. Um, so with these new engines, we can actually get to Mars faster and we can travel through space faster. Um, but sadly, because we can't just throw new engines on a rocket, real fast. Uh, they have to go through testings and be certified for space and be certified to actually go up. So um, we won't be able to use them on the first missions to Mars, but hopefully uh, future missions will be able to get there faster. And it's definitely a super awesome technology um, that can help us advance in our missions to space. And there is no technology for coming back for the moment. Uh, yes, there are plans to have return missions. You know, um, you know, some companies and agencies want to have a return mission. So their idea for the return mission is to be if we are on Mars for um, you know over a year, while we're there, we would be generating the fuel for the return mission while we're hanging out on Mars. Since we're there for that long, might as well be doing something like generating our uh, fuel to come home. And the last question, do you believe there is any extraterrestrial life on other planets? And if you will find any proof, uh, maybe on Mars, alive or extinct, uh, you will say to the world, yeah, so I definitely think that, um, you know, somewhere out there, there is something just because our universe is so big and so endless that it's almost impossible to think that there isn't just because, um, you know, we're only so, so small in uh, the giant universe. And as far as stuff on Mars, you know, there's been so many discoveries about water on Mars and water is such the such like a main core for a sign of uh, life. And so I definitely, I don't think there's going to be green walking men or anything, little creatures like that on Mars. But I think there is a possibility for there to be like bacterial life. There, we, you know, we found steam on Mars. So having uh, warm water could be really beneficial for a little bacteria that could be growing. So it's part of the reason why we want to go. And hopefully we'll figure it out one day. Thank you very much. Thanks. Europa FM, pe aceeași frecvență cu tine.